Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Choose to Do's campaign. The campaign where we're trying to beat the game on Legendary Iron Man difficulty with less equipment, less soldier classes, less hit points, stronger enemies via ABA and ABC and of course a lot of niche builds. Time for the Black Side Data Coordinates. Uh, this is going to be great because we're finally facing off against the Sector Pod. And I already mentioned we're going to bring the B team in here. Got the EMP grenade, which is going to work well. Just wondering, should we maybe put that onto someone more at the front line? Hmm. I mean, I can see the EMP grenade also being good on Toxic here. Did we have a lot of mechs? Yeah, heavy mechs are there as well. Alright, EMP grenade it is, uh, proximity mine here, and we're going to take the EMP grenade there. Um, we got cover removal, that's fine. We got anti-psi attacks, we got, uh, do we have a med kit? No, and I don't want to go in without a med kit again. So you know what Mike the Public Bravo is going to take? Damn right, it is a nanomed kit. So he's going to be our uh, medic for this run. Everything else looks pretty much good. I'm giving the Hellfire Projector another attempt to see if we can cr uh, burn the enemies to kind of a crispy pile and make them regret their life choices. Um, whether or not this is going to work, we're going to see in a second. Let's jump into the mission. And we are landing. Gosh, I am excited. This is a no time the mission, which means the Reaper is going to be even more important. Everybody is spotted out. This is Avenger. The facility is in range. Move and we got a straightforward corridor to the actual facility. Plus, we got some help here. Let's take a look. Elite Heavy. That is great. Three dots of armor, quite a few hit points, but even more important, a frag grenade, which I think is one of those, yeah. See, the alien frag grenades are unfair. They are just larger than ours. They are just larger than ours. Anyways, Sandman moves up. Let's take a good look what we're dealing with. Nothing. That is interesting. So... We got some high ground here, got some potential high ground there, the typical bridge setup. Let's take the right hand side because why not? Secundus moves up. Toxic follows. Mike the Public Bravo takes the high ground. Zirkim is another hidden. Or concealed uh, soldier so we can move him a little bit further forward and hunk takes the solid back line no problem, I always like it when the support is kind of in the mid back mid slash backfield they tend to work the best there again this is not a timed mission so there is really no need to go all in We're hearing the stomping of the sector pod on the right hand side like over here i've heard the opening of a door okay can't see an open door so no clue where it opened but it sounded as if it would come from here Sandman continues to move forward. Do we spot someone? Alright, so that's an Archon Sentinel and another Sentinel. Fair enough. Secundus moves all the way forward. If we could position ourselves up here, I think that would be good because we have cover from 
all relevant angles. See, so I can move over there. Shouldn't trigger anything. Elite heavy moves up. And hunk. Now I don't want to split the troops too thin. To cover here is exactly what we should get. The other option is even getting up here and working from high cover or uh, this one here. Keeps a solid um, formation. Hunk has uh, Overwatch even if he moved. Sandman takes the safest spot where he's least likely to be spotted out oh and the archon king is there fantastic just what we needed it's a fact it's really a um, a blessing to have him here because it's a non-timed mission and if we play our cards right we should be good Okay, so that might not fully work out, but we could take the high ground over here. Yeah, I think we need to take the high ground over here. Moving. Starting to move in. Just want to see what we're dealing with. Oh, okay, I see. We could even hit him from here, but the distance is quite far, right? Might as well move up. This does not trigger anything. Next up, Secundus. Moves over, does not trigger anything. Move to high ground and toxic moves up to high ground as well. Elite heavy. It's going to be our front line because it's an expendable and pretty well defended three armor uh, soldier. Fantastic. A lot of Archons. A lot of Archons. Holy freaking macaroni. I have sight beyond this. We're hearing even more enemies coming through. You know, I mean, we could go for kill zone. And then essentially let them charge in. Let's just double check. I mean, we could, like, hit two of uh, them. We have other options. We could use the rocket launcher. That's maybe not the worst idea. Not the best either, but it's a solid move, overall speaking. We could go for bombard which is even more damage. It's actually relatively decent. But we are not under time pressure, so if I would do Bombard, I'd also position myself up here. 
just so that we can do the follow-up shots when they are actually beginning to uh, move up. If you say so. As for Zirkim, I don't like his positioning up here because he would almost pull that other pack. Any step closer would pull them. Down here would unfortunately also pull them. Next best thing is over here. Not a perfect position, but an okay one. I want to be able to use his attacks to finish the guys. Okay, so we're moving up here and here and here, like I said. Oh wait a second! Ah, that pulls uh, that pulls the pack. Ah, stupid me. Not the end of the world, but not fantastic either. We can just deal with both of them for now and go for the others later. We, we do have death from above, so we could get that extra action back. Good, a couple of obvious uh, things. We like to hit both of them. Okay, but the range is not good. Are we going to give up on Bart? I mean, I do have an idea what we can do, right? This year, Good. we could hit it with a reach attack. We don't want to do that, but what we definitely can do. Is hit this year follow up explosion. The car should not blow up because it was outside of the explosion range good fantastic quite a bit of damage i like it let's see it could be a kill when you two holy shit good job dude team working over into a follow-up like i said good job dude mike the public bravo also known to his friends as mike the one who never misses bravo good he's potentially just moving to his colleagues if not he's taking one shot and i'm okay with that either not optimal from a uh, uh, from a utilization of resources perspective, but not terribly bad either. All right, so this one is a kill. Drop him. We have an autoloader. We even have an advanced autoloader. So, free reload it is. 
and move into here uh -huh. so that we're just a tiny bit closer for the uh, kill zone next turn. Good. With that team out of the way, we can also move up more elegantly. As you order, Commander. And in order to save some more resources, I can move all the way to here and use the second uh, Claymore, which is less valuable than the Bombard. Typically, Claymores are valuable, but since we haven't upgraded uh, them, um, I would argue they are less valuable. Good. Um, move in here to half cover and hunk on the other side. I think it's a very fair position. I'm trying to keep them far enough away just in case that if any of them does blazing pinions that we're not having more than two, two or three of our operatives affected. Okay, so... Time to deal with the Archon King. And next turn we can maybe get that pack. The target is marked. And the turn afterwards we maybe get that pack. Their clumsy patrol is moving. Okay. So, placing explosive. Okay, we can hit the explosive, that's good. Apparently, apparently, the king is not hit with it, which is unfortunate. But it will hit all three of his followers. Got a free action out of it, which is fantastic. There we go. That's 13 points of damage. And since it's not a prime, it will not get an action when we're hitting it with Overwatch. His friends eventually trigger it as well. Kill zone can be super effective if you're planning your entire turn around it. Which of course not everybody likes to do. Okay, not yet in range. Fair enough. See you, Kim. Throw his axe or fire a weapon with a solidly high chance of hitting this guy. He's still in cover, so he'll get the crit and hit bonus. And I think I'm go just going to take that. We save the axe for later. 80% unfortunately is a miss. Ruler reaction is burning. Tries to move in. Lays some counters. Guy's almost dead. He's not grabbing him, is he? Huh. Stupid AI. Eighty percent, okay. Or we're just hail of bulleting it and asserting our utter dominance here, which is exactly what we're doing. There you go. Zirkim takes like two or three falling damage. Dead. It has to be dead. Fallen, 
Or zero, because he's just a boss. Love it. Moving up. Commander, that's the last of them. Fantastic. Three alien rulers are down. We finally got uh, the Archon. There we go. Overdrive. This here should be close enough to at least take the shot. Alright. Moving over. Movement request confirmed. Hopefully not triggering another pack. And there should be a kill. Very good. No life signs present. And I think we're okay. We don't really need to do much here. I like the scouting. We're going to save his uh, concealment for later for later turn. <laughs> Kill zone is still good to go. I love it. Uh, the gift that keeps on giving. Very good. I just can't get enough. Well, this guy is ruthless. If you add all of the damage, he potentially just dealt like 80 or 90 damage. He's now out of ammunition and that's the only reason why the last shield bearer did not uh, provoke. But boy oh boy, that was such a successful kill zone. In all fairness, yes, did he pull the entire pack and everybody left and right? Oh, absolutely. Was it worth it? I will let you decide. Two, four, six, eight, eleven. Well, that's a kill. And the guy goes down. X -ray down. Got the throne buff so we can um, start to move in. Four secundos moves in. We got lightning reflexes here? Yep, we do. Okay. Move all the way up to here. I love how good run and gun is. Just on every single operative. It is fantastic. It's such a game enabler. Toxic also does have, by the way, lightning reflexes, so even if you would have been hit. We do not have death from above, right? No, we don't. Okay, cool. Do we have death from above on anyone else? I think the answer is no. Secondos moves up. Just out of curiosity, do we have a hundred percent shot? No, only seventy nine, which is not good enough. So let's mark. and that happens or that can happen unfortunately 
team working. We already marked him. Archon gets marked next. Wow. Two shots above 80% that just missed. That's unfortunate. Preparing the mech. And Zirkum moves up into high ground. I like to think that that's the better choice here. If I was to use the rocket launcher, hmm, that could explode and kill on top of it. Not a bad idea. Using the car effectively as an extra weapon damage. Not sure if we need the throwing axe yet. Good enough. Lots of shots that were missed. Okay, we potentially gotta use the, the X this time around. There we go, the burning will deal some extra damage. And this here hopefully will kill both of them. Viper almost dead. We could comet protocol a snake. Not the worst idea. How many hit points are we talking about? That's like what two, seven, two, four, six, seven. Okay, we could also kill this guy. Hundred percent chance to kill the Mamba. That's what we're going to do. Hope we're not going to be spotted out. I wanted to keep the concealment if possible. Okay, fantastic. That worked out well. Which also means we can use a protocol on Toxic just in case and Comet Protocol on the Archon. Not pretty but effective. We missed a lot of shots so we were forced to use cooldowns. The armor will need to move all the way around, can't really do much about it. And Mike takes a cover position over here. Good, we've gotten a pack of two here. Four here, that's six. Another two, that's eight. And another two, that's ten out of what I think was 18 originally. Interestingly enough. Blade storm triggers. Oh, I see, because it already moved up. Okay, cool. It was just delayed. Good, we're moving up further. 
Reload for Toxic. And a couple of obvious uh, things. Number one, Zirkum wants to get that thing down. Dead Eye into just straight up killing it. Let's remove the cover. Which helps us with stripping the armor. Very good. And there is the kill. Very good. Mike the Public Bravo begins to move up because we need the sniper a bit further up there. Likewise, Lee, our specialist will move up. Sandman before he falls down. The building has already caught fire. Moves in. And I'm still waiting for that good old sector pot. I am at your you service. You will never hide from me. An alien patrol. Sector pot prime. Gotta hate it. You got to hate it. But thanks to our scouting. We will be able to take that thing over. It will take a while, but rest assured, it will be fantastic. Moving up, uh, Zirkum okay. and the Elite Heavy are both taking aggressive positions down here. I think the rest is more or less in a safe-ish spot. Okay, the building is on fire. Oh, yeah. But we've seen worse. Reloading wherever necessary. I will reposition. We're moving in. Take a good look. And eventually we'll go to that tower. Soon ish. Volk says I am to obey. Reload. Reloading. And let's just overwatch. This pack here might be running right into us. Who knows? The more important question is how do we deal with that sector pod? sure what those guys are i think those were the melee archons and that map here is crawling with archons holy moly ah, can't really get an haywire protocol in because we're not seeing that sector pod 
Which is really unfortunate. All right, moving up here. I'm trusting you. The time for hiding is over. Good. We're not there yet. We're just spotting all of that out. Unfortunately, you can't stealth up in that suit. It would be fantastic if you could, but it's not possible. Copy. Moving over here mainly because I don't like the fire. I don't want to get burned or cooked. We're stepping a I bit to the comply. side. Optical sensors on Overwatch. I'm on it. Nice field. On Overwatch. Okay, position. for now everybody's just Cover. staying here. I want to get a hold of that sector pod. It's unfortunately moving, which makes that whole that whole mission to conquer it a bit more difficult. Okay. I don't like that we can't see it. Somehow the camera is stuck to our position. Okay, moving up. No time to spare. Into what I would perceive to be a safe spot, where the sector pod is not going to be able to spot us out. Good, we're waiting for now. I want the sector pod to come uh, to come back into open uh, ground and there we're trying to hack him. Wow, pretty beefy packs. Double Archon and an Andromedon. Good, we should now be able to finally... Yeah, see him, right? Grab that bot. Um, are we talking about the sector port? Yeah, sector port prime. 25%. Well, that's not bad. Almost. Not getting anywhere. Sector port doesn't know that we're here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to overwatch and I will fast forward that to a degree because that's what's going to happen in the next uh, few rounds. I'll continue to try to get that sector pod. Okay, perfect. So, second attempt. Let's try to haywire really the sector pod prime. It's, the sky is just too good to not take him over. 25%. Come on. Are oh, you kidding me? <laughs> that was just on. Oh my lord. That was. The game just gave me that false glimpse of hope that it was a 75 but apparently we rolled a 74 all right let's try again and attempt number three Activate time to haywire that sector pot come on 25 percent is one out of four well done saiken you shut it down and I think triggered it uh, by doing so. Well, might as well.
start with pulling that other pack. This shots, by the way, also do not trigger. And I'm not sure if the shutdown really has activated the pack. Maybe it did not. Optical sensors on Overwatch. What's over there? Affirmative severing now. Okay, so none of the packs should be go. triggered right now. But it's funny because the sector port definitely is being shut down at the moment. I just misclicked. I thought I had selected it, but I did not. Shield bearer or skirmisher. I think we're going for the skirmisher. They have tactical. Uh, they do have uh, uh, tactical analysis, which will rob them from one action, anyways. We don't need to take a shot here. And again, we don't need to really use anything here. I mean, I could use Bombard, but we don't need to. We're just going to Overwatch. Don't have any other long range activities. And very likely, they are just going to get shields. And tactical analysis means skirmisher is repositioning. Takes the overwatch like a man. Okay, so is the sector port activated or not? The way that they are moving, it seems as if they are not activated. Which would be great, by the way. Nasa, nothing worth, uh, worse than a pissed off sector pod. Well, maybe a sector pod prime, like, but there is definitely nothing worse than a pissed off sector pod prime. Skirmisher should die. Alien object in sight. Sick. Um, you know, how about we're just moving over here for now? I don't know how much the AI cheats in terms of knowing my position. I am on watch. Overwatch. Setting Overwatch. But I would appreciate if we're just going to uh, stay here. That means with their one move that they do currently have, nothing should, nothing too extraordinary should be happening. Up cover is okay because we can hunker down automatically. In position. All right, the enemy is moving in. And we eventually will mark this guy, but not hit it. Highly unfortunate. We just trigger. Oh, come on. Huh. 
Out of all of the things that you don't want to do, you don't want to trigger this guy. I could have won the map if it wouldn't have been for that unfortunate misclick. Could kill the mech right away. Good. Reloading. Time for hail of bullets. That prepares the shield bearer. Okay, works like a charm. Moving up. So that Secundus here could be our main target if they decide to come through the bridge. Reading. Moving to position. Let's kill the shield bearer. Didn't work, but the car is almost going to explode. Let's kill the shield bearer. Hits but does not kill. I think we're going to wait with uh, Comet Protocol. I don't like. I don't like uh, mm, to waste it. I think we're going to use it on the Sector Pot Prime. Which means instead of doing that right away, Zirkim here takes a protocol. We're going into Overwatch and we're just going to do uh, to use Dead Eye in order to reduce the hit points. It is fine, we're going to be okay with these two here. I understand. They have technical analysis, so they can't really reach any target of value. Oh, cleverly moving away. Well, that is not a bad position. I like it. Okay, that's a problem. Luckily we got Sustin and Sphere. That's why we've taken it. And they don't have tactical analysis, which tells me that they originally had been activated by the shutdown. Okay, we do have our typical situation. Everything's going to shit. To be entirely honest, I think given that we do not have our rocket anymore, we're just going to move away. Don't want uh, Zirkim to be a particularly interesting target. He has shot twice, which means two more shots before the sector port's running out. Good. Question is, where is the full cover that I'm looking for? Half cover all around. Where's the full cover? Uh, 
Uh, this here could be a thing. But we're exposing ourselves. I do not like that we're having zero full cover here. It's a bit of side effect of removing that much cover. All things considered, this here is potentially one of the safest cover spots. It is removable cover. Could have used the car as well. Either way would have worked. Good. And this should... Very much hit both of them. Hopefully stun. There's a shutdown for two rounds. That's what we're, we were looking for. Which nicely translates into, we're now going to kill them. This here, by the way, was the full cover that we were looking for, but just out of reach. Being greedy, grabbing the loot here. Nothing of value for us, unfortunately. I'm going. Moving over into full cover. Do we have an auto, uh, an advanced stock? Yes, we do. That's the auto kill we were looking for. Now, what I'm looking for is proximity, so we're getting as close as possible. And let's shred this guy. up since this here is supposed to be our front line even though it wasn't and we're just keeping our distance Zirkim took a lot of hits but sustenance sphere is actually not too bad against the primes you can use rangers as front line and they still at least will have kind of their one life Secundus reloads, and I think this is going to finish the sector port off. What did we learn? Do not mess around with the sector ports. Thinking about it, Zirkim had a pretty uh, tough time. The Archon King picked him up during this mission. Good to go. He got focused twice by the sector port. Completely shredded. Okay. We know there is one more pack. I go right Almost here. waiting inside. On it. And I think it's fair to start moving in. Overwatch. Reapers are always because these guys them. will not come out. 
But it's a good moment in time to really reload. Get everybody in position. Gosh, that's Hectopod. The misclick. It didn't register the takeover. So tragic, because with a Sectopod, this uh, whole thing would have been much easier. We would have just taken it over. The guys wouldn't have been able to uh, get it uh, down. And essentially, the Sectopod would have just mawed through all of them at the same time wounding itself until the point where it couldn't like compete with them any uh, anymore and we would just need to be uh, cleaning it up i think the sector port prime potentially would have even killed all of uh, them given enough time I'll watch closely. I'm ready. but yeah of course i did that for educational purpose just want to show you really how good the emp grenades were and why sustenance sphere Makes an awful lot of sense if you're playing with um, a better advent. Is that a prime? It's hopefully not. It is hopefully not. They are clustering up nicely. Valkyr, Valkyr, and just a normal Andromedon. Okay, cool. We're good, we're good. No more grenades here. Uh, no more rockets either. It will really use up all of our explosives already. Holy macaroni. You know what we didn't use up? Exactly. Good old flamethrower. Alright, toxic moves up. I think we gotta remove cover. And mark those Valkyries. Our removal will be difficult. Ninety percent or almost a kill. Wait a second. So this here would be cover removal, right? Plain and simple, 8 to 9 damage. This here be a massive hellfire projector. 6 to 9 points of damage. They are burning. Just that little Andromedon is still sitting there. Hate it. I hate it. And we have no really good cover removal. We're going to go in with the, so to speak, sacrificial lamb. I'm hoping for the melee attack here. Might as well take a shot. Oh, some sort of damage, that's okay. Full cover just in case and that Andromedon here would nicely be shredded uh, can we hit them with the flashbang that would prevent his acid attack Do 
move to here and then flashbang. That would be an option. You know, to be honest, I wish it would be different. I really would like to help our projector these guys. If I could hit three, I would do it. But I think we need to remove the cover. This is almost level. Fifty percent crit chance wouldn't kill him, but it would definitely put him near death. down to one HP. Okay, fantastic. We have no more free reload. Burning might kill him. Not sure though. Concealment, because we don't want to be targeted yet. A protocol on Secundus, because he's likely being targeted. I think we had the stock, right? Yeah, we did. So let's kill the Andromedon. Very good. Burning does not deal enough damage to kill it outright. And now the question is how do they proceed? Clearly, melee attacks are a thing. There we go. Luckily, ooh, they are healing. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Interesting concept. Wow, and they are healing for as much damage as they are dealing. Oh, that's not bad. I like the idea. The idea is rock solid, but uh, that is really cool. Good. You know what? Because we haven't seen it yet, here's the Hellfire Projector. Somehow flames in all three directions. And then puts them into a battle frenzy. I can see the appeal of these guys. Ninety nine percent, we're going to take that shot. Target still standing. Good. Into full cover, I want to be really careful that we're the least tar. Okay, well, too careful he uh, that full cover is not shoot through. Well, 
Both of them are burning. Both of them are relatively hard to hit. It's an interesting combination. I have not fought against those guys yet. Um, what I would say is they are likely pretty susceptible if they can't hit people in melee. And disorientation will make that highly, highly likely. Moving as ordered. At the same point, we're just moving over. Going back into the shadows. I am trusting you. And next round we can rejoin combat. Burning works well against them. The problem is they are healing for quite a bit. And they seem to have a lot of movement. Alright, double move. They can't shoot, apparently, but they are pretty nasty in melee. Good, I gave uh, the flamethrower an honest try. I really wanted uh, to make it work. Uh, we paid with a few more hit points. Problem is, it does not shred. It has an abysmal range. And I really overall don't like it. My suggestion of making it better would be make sure that it shreds, make sure that it also uh, kind of melts cover almost. Maybe less damage, and it sets uh, enemies on fire. I think overall that that's still an okay compromise. Target neutralized. Got eyes on me. Very good. Revealed. And these guys are pretty tough Valkyries, so I'll keep them in mind. The whole massive dodge, high movement and so on, that's not too bad. What's our chance to just stun this guy? Should be okay. 100%, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Mike moves up. And Sandman does exactly what Sandman's supposed to do, which is scouting. My life is in your hands. Watching comes naturally. I think that was an overall relatively difficult pack. I wouldn't have given them a huge amount of credit just for the composition, but Andromedon uh, has has quite a few hit points, so that's in itself like almost 80-ish hit points, and both of the Valkyries de facto, with their ability to leech life, have a few hit points as well. Okay. Moving up. See, so you can move into oh, yeah. full cover. And I think Sandman can start moving in. I can handle that. Good. 
We do have a solid cover position here. There are still enemies around. At least one more pack. Else, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't see enemy activity. I will go. And now the one million dollar question is: Where are they? And what are they doing? This is Avenger. Package is in range. Good. We can still check that out next turn. Part just exploded. So let's take some solid positions over here. On the move. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. Got it. I'm on the move. Good. The team looks Scanning. solid Got still. You. Few injuries, but that was to be expected. We've fought against two primes, and almost exclusively beefy packs. I like the re-population uh, of those areas. And who would have guessed? Of course, they have a patrol moving here. Another patrol is in there. Let's position here. It's unlikely to be spotted out. Good to go. Full cover. I think that this position is good. Like the public bravo can essentially move all the way up to there and zikim just keeps a tiny bit uh fallen back position he's in one shot ra uh, reach and has no more sustenance sphere so gotta be a bit careful i don't want to lose a major if we can prevent that from happening Okay, they're moving in. We know that they could come out basically whenever. Great opportunity for us to move up and claim way more territory here. Good. Ever Vigilant will allow for another Overwatch and Zirkim. Well, Zirkim is a bit the problem child here. Uh, again, I don't want him to be in trouble. Reloading. Overwatch, Overwatch, Overwatch. Another Overwatch. In. I figured our uh, specialist would have, have Overwatch with Ever Vigilant. He does not. Not the end of the world. But not optimal either. All right, let's see how well our Overwatch trap works. That's a hit. That's a miss. It's another miss. I shouldn't have uh, banked on that Overwatch. Okay, overdrive. Starting with a purifier, who's now ready to essentially die at any moment. If we move in here, that would work well. Perfect run and gun target, yes please. We're just missing the hail of bullets. Lamentable, but okay. That skirmisher needs to go down next. Yeah, 
87, not good enough. Oh boy, we can school mine either of these guys. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, you know what? This might explode and remove cover. <laughs> As predicted. Feeding the kills to our sniper. And because it is so satisfying, we're going to school check him. Whoosh. Ah, of course, we're getting some neural feedback. But he's down. And I think overall we just managed to kill every single one of them. Moving up, just to check. Moving to here. Yes, okay, fantastic. Okay, can we call a Sky Ranger? Base in Evic Zone. No, I think it automatically appears. But since we're not in a time pressure anymore, what I would want to do is get into a better position. Move, move, move. Beat, beat. Because what's going to happen is, as you've um, definitely played through that mission potentially as well, is the moment that we're picking up that mission objective, things are going to become a bit more ugly. Good, let's first of all position ourselves outside. So I need to do some repositioning here. Secundus moves up. Toxic moves up. Mike moves up. Zirkin moves up. Good. Done. And I want our cooldowns back. Which is two more rounds, so another round of waiting. But since it is going to be next round and the reinforcements are just about to come in, Hung positions himself here. Sikun is also in the middle. I for once have figured out that is not a bad place because you can reach all of uh, the outer uh, parts of the map without too much problem and we don't know where the landing zone will spawn good that's where the reinforcements are going to spawn Right, fantastic. And that's where we need to go. Acquisition of the package. Move to evac. I can handle it. We already know that there is no one going to be out here. So charging. Secundus is charging as well. 
Toxic is charging, and eventually we're just maybe going to run off of the map. Depending on Zirkim's speed. He's the fur furthest back at this point. We can deal with those three, if need be. Question is, can everybody escape? All right, Zirkim can get out, which means everybody else can get out as well. Could have killed all three of them still. But sometimes those uh, three extra experience are not worth it. We have limited cooldowns left over. I want to take more damage. And like I mentioned, Zirkim is also injured. So don't want to risk that as well. Overall, a good mission. Pretty long one, but a good one. By thinking about that heavy flamer, it's still not a really, really good... Um, it, it's still potentially the worst heavy weapon in existence, but there is even an idea how you could make it work. If you were to uh, use the damage that it currently has and then the burning damage next round would be the same, it would uh, potentially make the cut. Still against large units and units that cannot burn. It would be useless, but overall the rest would be fine. And I think that is how I would fix that item going forward. Maybe shredding and double the burning damage. So the burning damage needs to be equal to the normal damage. Anyways, Archon King Corpse, that's what we were looking for. Fantastic, our last item. Our top progress further reduced. Looks like we've got our work cut out for us, Commander. Work is well. Change research. Uh, yes, please. I have. I can see why you would consider redirecting our efforts, Commander. We'll get to work on the new project right away. Good. Very good. With the loss of this facility, there can be no question that the aliens work. There is more loot. Loot low. is always good. Pursue them to the end, Commander. And we can use that in order to maybe. Uh, equip some of the lower level troops. Typically weapon assortments and other PCSs could be amongst the loot. Maybe some additional tail and rounds. End of month. Fantastic month. That's a good one. None of them are alive. We're still looking to counter the dark events and very soon a new facility is being constructed. No new no new resistance orders so that is good as well sabotage gets us back into the no problem zone and i think soon another soon another facility is being created we're using our 410 intel hopefully at this point very very late in the eight, uh, end game might as well use it in order to purchase whatever we feel like. Superior expanded magazines, definitely one of those items. Uh, superior stock isn't fantastic, but it's better than nothing. Sometimes you need that, like, one extra item. And back to assorted loot. I would have hoped for some more superior PCSs, but none of them were available. Sometimes you're just unlucky with the month. Great. Archon King Autopsy and Icarus Armor is done. 
additional upgrade on a shotgun. I mean, look, why not? We're not going to lose anything. We can research in the meantime over here. And that'll be fine. I don't want to stretch it out too much. And those breakthroughs are minor at best. Frodo. Great looking uh, dude. Fantastic. And I think we can put Wurtz then finally onto the Icarus suit. Once they are back from the covered ops mission. Good. Mobility plus one. Good, what do we have this month? The recover loot and aim, weapon upgrade, recruit an engineer and will. Experimental grenades are completed instantly. That's not a bad one. Potentially not necessary for us now. Breakthrough research. Proving damage output of pistols plus one. I think we're going to do that. That's not bad. Increased income, mobility, aim plus three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them are good, like the aim, uh, the slight aim upgrade. The breakthrough uh, research is potentially the one that uh, stands out the most here. I'm going to put couple of the experienced um, other soldiers on it we didn't want to use colonels uh, we didn't want to use Templars I'm not sure I mean we could theoretically put them on that mission I suppose anyways okay good well that's an easy mission the Prime team now is fully built. I don't see much upgrade there. Maybe a bit of aim, but that really won't change that much. Uh, do we still need to build the re uh, the suit? Give me a second. Proving ground. Choose pro uh, process. Yes, Icarus armor. We're missing one Illyrium core. Okay, got to get that Illyrium core. There will be a mission or two before we can finish the game anyways, so might as well get that Delirium core. Alien facility coordinates locked in, Commander. If not, we're just going to uh, do one of those facility missions real quick. Uh, data pad and the stock. Not exactly a core, that would have been the easy solution. Good. Let's scan and make sure that we're Commander, the that we're completing up the actual research. Good. Plus one damage on the pistols. That's good. Mobility, I think we're still going for aim. Eight days. Wheel hacking aim for ten days. Six days for promotion, not needed. I think that aim plus three here is good enough. Gonna give it two wards. Down to seven days. Good. She eventually will be super good at hitting. We are now prepared to autopsy the body of the powerful being. This good. And once that is done in nine days, we should be ready to go. I hate to do it, but we don't have Icarus armor. Maybe I'll just do one of those facilities, or maybe. We're fighting against Chrysalids in Andromedon Prime. That's a hardcore enemy. Um, what? 
looks uh, doable, but still like a fun mission. So that is going to be potentially our last chance uh, to uh, get our hands onto an uh, core and hopefully the Icarus armor. If we're bo if it does not drop here, I'll just do uh, a facility or two off screen so that we can get that Alarium core. And that should then uh, solve the situation. In terms of team, does the B team still ha have it in them? I think so. So same team as before. Zirkum needs a new sustenance sphere, but luckily we got enough priests killed uh, to continue having those spheres. And I started to like the sustenance sphere as well. It's a decent item. We're definitely going to uh, go back to the plasma blaster. Or rocket launcher. Nah. I, th I think Sirkim can take that rocket launcher and we're going with plasma blaster. That's fine. Punk here has done a fantastic job the last time. And Mike did a good job as well. I, I thoroughly like what he has done. I think we still had a Wrath suit, right? Yes, we did. Okay, cool. We didn't have... Uh, uh, we haven't used it yet, so might as well just give it to him uh, before uh, use it or lose it, uh, kind of uh, like that. And we're, I think we're okay. Let's use the man nano med kit here, and we're just using the flashbang grenade in case anyone uh, uh, any of the enemies is going to cause uh, problems we're fighting against psionic enemies anyways chrysalid prime officer purifier no none of them are psychic okay refraction field it is good and that brings us to the end of today's episode it was a long one we're having that one more retaliation mission, seven days of research, then hopefully Icarus suit is, all, uh, is instantly built as well. And uh, hopefully we can then go into Waterworld. Uh, the Choose to Lose campaign is nearing its end, and I am glad how it played out. Enjoyed it a lot. If you enjoyed it as well, leave a comment and a like down below, and see you in the next run, guys. Bye-bye.